Here, you can exercise your rights to freedom every day without leaving your home. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City way. Welcome to Real Talk with me, Anele, coming to you live on SABC3. Look, it's not every day that we get to chat to the mayor of one of Africa's biggest economic hubs. It all starts in a small village of Haramute in Hamanskral, where he worked his way up to becoming one of South Africa's most influential and wealthiest businessmen. Raised by a mother who earned barely enough cleaning houses to feed her children, he grew up to be one of the earliest black entrepreneurs, though illegal for any black person to own a business. Here is a snippet of his humble beginnings. Herman grew up in Hamanskral, the village called Ramoti. He's from uh, a family of six, two brothers and four sisters. It was quite a um, really a rough life. They had to steal water, they had to steal wood, just, for, just to survive. He was not one to let his surroundings determine what kind of future he was going to have. He knew there was a better and richer world waiting for him out there, and he was determined to find it. And so the journey that saw him achieve heights that few could have imagined back then began. We welcome the show businessman turned politician, Mr. Herman Mashawa. Huh? <laughs> the mayor. Please, please don't call me a politician, man, because I think, you know, a politician in, in our context has got such a bad uh, reputation. So please call mm. me a public servant because public I, I'm, I'm, servant. A, I'm a servant of the, peop of the people of the city of Johannesburg and mm. my country. So, you know, the more I grow up, I, I realize even businessmen, Jay, are politicians because the amount of politics that happen, <laughs> Justin Jay in Karatos. Okay, and, and <laughs> less then uh, we, we've got to understand what, what we mean by politics because politics is about our own lives, about mm. our own family, about our own yeah, community yeah. and so forth. It's just that I think because of... Uh, in, 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 in our context. Now, uh, current yeah, context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Politics have that's actually gained such really bad reputation. Yeah. If, uh, once is, one is a politician, immediately we think about corruption, we talk about self-interest. Yeah. Uh, whereas in my like particular... A, like, like an like abuse a, of power, yeah, Abuse of yeah. power. You know, uh, whereas politics, it's actually about saving society, and I think mm. I feel so immensely proud. Uh, at my age, uh, the country give you such an honor, such a huge uh, privilege to serve. I think uh, it's it's such a great uh, payback period. But though mm. this is a difficult job, <laughs> and, uh, what is your age? Because you look 38. Well, well now I'm 58. I just turned 58 in in, uh, in August this year. So I'm an old man. I'm a senior citizen of this country. Mm. You know? Do you it means it uh, it anything other people eat. I've been married for 36 years. Because you, you look like one of those people who, like, you, you don't drink any sugar, you don't eat meat, <laughs> you don't eat starch, you don't eat wheat. Like, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a, no, no, I'm, I'm an old man, 58. In two years' time, I'll be uh, I'll be 60. And you know what, what is actually just quite scary about it? Mm. The other day, I was I was an 18 year old uh, young man at Varsity. In Teflop? Yeah, at Teflop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then all of a sudden, yeah, my I'm 58. My goodness, and uh, and and time is flying at a rate that is actually quite scary. Mm. I always say to to time and say, please, man, you know what? I don't mind your speed, but leave my body alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like I was saying, your body doesn't show any signs of aging. So you taking us back to 18. Me, I want to take you back to day zero, ne? Yeah. When when your grandfather was walking with his chest pushed out because his Very grandson proud, was gonna young. be born that day né? and no one could stop him no one could slow him down and they were trying to say hello he's like ah <laughs> let's well in alone yeah i've got pressing issues my grandson is being born right and then he named you hymen h-i-g-h-m-a-n mm. hymen because he felt that you were going to be a man of importance one day 
Well, I think, you know, the, the, you know my grandfather adored me, uh, uh, really and truly adored me. He was this young man, uh, the man uh, working as a security guard for one of the municipalities in Harangu. Uh -huh. used to uh, come to uh, Manskral by bicycle every month and, uh, you know, once a month. But he adored me. So, and I, so I grew up with this stigma where everyone said, the day you were, you were born, uh, the whole village had to come to a standstill. <laughs> this young man, man uh, uh, my mother, after giving birth to this young person, my grandmother took a 25 litre drum, went to go and fetch water for her. Something that he never used to do. It was, was a woman's job to get water. Job, but he did it because he says, uh, 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 <laughs> this young man is going to turn things around. So I grew up with the stigma until I, later on my life I said, no man, let this me change high, my name to Herman. Yeah, no. Nah, there was a, you know, uh, Kaiser Chiefs, uh, they had a guy called Herman Pele Blasky. <laughs> I used to be a Chiefs fan, and, and I decided, no, let me convert this high man to Herman. And fortunate enough, uh, I managed to change it, and officially I'm, I'm, I'm Herman. I think Herman, Herman was just too, uh, but I okay. think too, too no. much for anybody to absorb. No, but are there times when something happens in your life? I mean, you became, you know, uh, you know, the highest civil servant in the city, or you become a mayor, or when you get these awards, or you 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 given a doctorate, you know, you're honored, not given, you're honored with a doctorate for your hard work in business. That you like, yeah, very naki high man. No, I mean, three weeks ago I was invited by London Business School uh, 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 to be a, 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 to, uh, to be a, one of the finalists uh, yeah, in one in one category, mm. five of us of. Uh, uh, crazy entrepreneurs, mm. the kind of you know. Uh, Do you no, think your 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 body reacts more to being an entrepreneur than being a politician? I think you know I'm a I'm a normal human being. I, I act on instinct. Uh, I believe in synchronicity. Uh -huh. You know I believe in acting and doing the right things, and things just really work work out. Uh -huh. I don't really have to uh, to try and really push myself to be something I'm not. Uh -huh. I'm a normal, natural human being. Uh, that uh, I always actually people think I'm joking or when I'm joking or not uh -huh. because my parents are not here to to tell me because. Uh, uh, when I grew up, when I woke up to this world, when I was, what, five, six? Mm. That's when you actually w wake up uh, to life and you realize you're a human being. No parents around. I'm just with my sisters. I'm told my father died when I was two, yeah. and uh, and uh, my mother was a domestic worker here in Johannesburg looking after white children and cleaning white homes. Mm. And then I always say to people, but I look at myself, uh, was I a plain child or something? Because well, well, the reason I'm quite asking this, my father used to work for a pharmacy in in Bree Street called Osborne Pharmacy. I believe uh, that's a pharmacy like this. Used mm. to, you know, they used to come home on a regular basis. Mm. And I look at uh, that I was born 26 of August. So that means my father must have been home around November. De December. Of, no, no, yeah, no. <laughs> so now what the, yes. the question I'm asking. Did uh, this couple plan me, or were they just uh, the, doing their thing? And in the process, I got conceived. It was festive season, <laughs> Herman. Make it December, boss. Please. <laughs> you are a child of festive season. <laughs> this is why you are a happy person. Because when you were conceived in the hate days of well, life. As, as long as they planned me, that I, I was not an accidental uh, child. Because, because that's, that's actually something that uh, I always really share with the youth and, and others to say, please, you know what? But um, when you want to really give your children a better chance in life, yeah. plan them. Children okay. can't be blamed, can't be yeah. conceived that they should be in after with the yeah. some drinks and so. Yeah, plan you know? them. Plan them because when when you, you when you plan them, you give them a better chance of so. So yes. they can be considered that they should be as long as we plan that we are trying for no, a child. I don't think you can plan them at a should be. You can. No. I get if no. you and I decide that we're trying to have a baby and we happen to be at a should be oh, that no, day. No, please. And I then know, we happen I to be know. happy right then and there. No, I don't think I can be. <laughs> No, Wait a minute. We, 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 no, man. You know what? Uh, we, we've got to make sure that we plan our, uh. our kids because we give them a better chance mm. of, succe of, of succeeding Okay, in so life. we're going to take a break. I have a question for you, which you'll answer when we come back from an ad break, is 
How does, like, because, you know, in your book you write about how your mother was never there and your sisters basically raised you mm. and they would be the ones to cook and be the motherly mm. person. But when your mom came home, you'd feel that actually this person doesn't live with us. So it's a bit sore, right? So how does somebody who's raised in that environment grow up to be as level-headed and as fair as you are? It's like, I don't see any anger, I don't see any resentment, I don't see any I feel sorry for myself. So how did that happen from you know, for when you were born, growing up, and now you're 58. Like, what was the balance in that, and what was, like, the, the road you navigated? <laughs> uh, he'll tell us the answer after we come back from the break. The story of his extraordinary life as an entrepreneur and founder of the iconic Black Hair brand. Black Like Me continues with us after the break. Mr. Mashaba came to see me in 1983. We were looking for money. Someone introduced them to Mr. Dube. I used to import sovereign free and start soft hair products from Atlanta, Georgia. When Herman came to see me, he says, look, you've got an idea about the hair product. We are selling the hair product. But I think as a businessman who had an idea of um, importing hair products, knew that this concept was a good concept. And um, that's when he said, yes, guys, I will back you. And the loan that um, he lent to a black like me was about 30,000 rent. And I came up with the name, I said the name black like me. Which was very powerful, evocative, and we thought it would really attract. This is how, at the age of 24, the young man who had only visited a hair salon once came to start a company that is today worth billions and has become known as an aspirational and motivating brand in the black community. It's aimed to provide black people with a product for beautiful hair. If you've just tuned in, I'm in conversation with an unashamed capitalist, Joburg Mayor Herman Mashaba. Now we call him High Man because, you know, the scheme ones. <laughs> So I was asking before the break that, like... No, my business is not worth uh, billions, it's millions. Millions. Am, am I, am I doubling <laughs> your... Am I adding yeah, a zero? Nah, yeah, you're adding... When last did you count it? Uh, <laughs> it's not important now, I'm a public servant. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so how do you know it's not worth a billion then? Yeah, well, I'm still a shareholder. Uh, yeah. So when last did you count? <laughs> 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 now, right now, uh, my, my uh, focus is on saving the residents of Johannesburg. <laughs> it's a pay, it's a payback period. Oh, I mean, okay. uh, women of this country and, this, and the world the has, shares, been so, has been so great to me uh, over the last thirty-five years. If you don't want the shares, you can just give them to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, if they are heavy on you as, as a public servant, please. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready no, to receive. No, but I think it's having a shoulder like that then allows me, gives me the space yeah. to save uh, the uh, society yeah. without having to worry about money. Yeah. And that's uh, really, I think, the fortunate uh, part about uh, me as a public servant, yeah. that I don't have to really worry about money. Money, I'm a capitalist and, yeah. I, and, I, love, and, and I love money. I love making money yeah. when, I, when I was in, in, in business. But uh, I'm in a fortunate position, honestly. Money is not, a, it's not an issue in my life any longer. Uh, it's so, I'm so glad you mentioned that, because it's a question that we toy around with with my friends a lot as well, when we, we like thinking of leadership and who should lead and you know when they should lead. Do you think people who've made money make better leaders because they, they're used to money, they can make it? It's not like, because for instance, if I come and the next thing I've got a budget, a billion, I mean, like, I say that right now that I won't be corrupt, but wait till you give me a budget of a billion, then we'll see my character change. Do you think that people who have been successful and they've made the money makes them better politicians when it comes to character? I think, I don't know. I don't know uh, in my particular case, the reason why I volunteered to the DA to be the mayoral candidate for the city of Joburg, being concerned about uh, the direction my country was taking. Uh -huh. Because uh, money was no longer an, an issue uh, to me. Mm. Uh, over the last 35 years, uh, my family, we make more money than we can consume. So money is not an, an, an issue in our lives uh, mm. and I think uh, uh, we believe and I think uh, that saving society for me I used to and mm. I still do even from a commercial point of view mm. but then 
I've taken service to society at, at another level ah. than just giving people money. Yeah. I can actually participate in an environment where I can serve without having to be without corrupt. Thoughts, thoughts of, of uh, what am I getting? Uh, what am I getting? Yeah. So I think that's an that's an advantage uh, that uh, that 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 I have, and I'm sure that. Um, uh, if our nation one day can reach that level of successful people who don't mm -hmm. really need money. Because tell me, Anil, how much can I eat a day? I mean, like right now, when I arrived here, mm. I was hungry. Your team looked after me, gave me two uh, rolls and, and a cup of tea. Okay. That's all I had for the day. I can't, I can't you eat can't more. have more than that. I can't have more than that. I don't have time to uh, to uh, to go and buy shoes. I've got, I think, three pairs of You've shoes. You've only got two I've feet. I've got three, so... three pairs of shoes. I think it's already, it's, it's too much. So what I'm saying is, yes, it's important to make money. Let's not really make that mistake because making money allows you to, uh, it gives you the freedom. Comfort, uh, choice. It, choice. Uh, power. And, and, and so forth. I don't know if it gives you power. What, what do I need to power for? I don't really need power. I just really need to be a, a, a free human being. Because yeah. honestly, the day 26th of August, uh, when I dropped out of my mother's body, was a, a free man was, was I, born. Was, yeah. and, uh, and, and the freedom I admired. And I had this uh, grandfather who adored me. Did and, you never you know, feel like you weren't free? Because I understand, OK, you were born, and then you were growing up, and it was obviously apartheid. Uh, but and then you guys went into the homeland system, where Haman's crowd fell under the Buddha. All of a sudden, I'm, where, in a way, you you think you're free, but you're no, not because I you wasn't, can see. No, I wasn't because uh, from the time the Buddha government was uh, established, for me as a, as a Shangan. Automatically, I was not big Botswana uh, citizen, so mm. I, I lived uh, as a non-citizen of North South Africa and Botswana until the new South Africa. Yeah, where during the Botswana government uh, they could not give me citizenship of Botswana. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> see, this is what I want to know. <laughs> I wasn't. I was not because I don't know. They expected me to be in Kazangul, where I did not even have a single uh, yeah. uh, family. <laughs> I did not know anyone in uh, in 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 in, in Kazangul. The Botswana government expected my family to move over there. And we stayed, uh, my family lived in Haramuzi for generations, so we yeah. had nowhere to go. So, But how, how are you not bitter? This was my question <laughs> before. Because I really feel like I read your story in your book, Black Like You, and, you know, and it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's light, yet the things that, I have, that are happening are heavy, mm. yet you're still a light personality. And the way you tell the stories, it's like they don't burden you. You know, the fact that your mom was a domestic worker, the fact that your grandfather was working on a farm one day and the, the, the farmer's son decided to, you know. to try out his new rifle and yeah. shot at your yeah, grandfather. No, yeah, no. Like, that doesn't look like it burdens you. So how do you... How, how do you well, I think you know, that you... I, I grew up uh, uh, until I was in my early 20s. I actually truly believed white people were evil. Uh, uh. I, the, from the day I was born until I was in my early 20s, white people for me were evil creatures. And the reason why they were evil to me at the time, because I just did not understand this hatred. Mm. Because I was born in a family with no mother, with my sisters, with lots of love, no food. <laughs> mm, mm. But uh, lots of uh, love. Uh, I've never really seen uh, uh, any fighting. My mother would come from time to time, mm. uh, 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 once a month if we we lucky. And every Sunday we'll go to church. Mm. Uh, I grew up uh, in in a Methodist church. Every Sunday without failure we go to church. Uh, during the week we go and steal wood uh, to make fire mm. uh, and steal uh, water from Stenkamp's farm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's. Uh, but then I looked at uh, as soon as uh, as I was growing up, realizing who I was, and I needed freedom. And I thought I was going to attain it through education. Mm -hmm. And that's when it really worked out. I was lucky enough, 1978, I passed my metric. Mm -hmm. Then 79, I went to Tefluop, second year of my studies, interrupted. And, uh, interrupted by? By sh the political Let's environment. Go. The uh -huh. National Party made it impossible for us as uh, black uh, people to pursue our educational dream. Mm -hmm. One morning, 6 o'clock, the university surrounded by the army because for two weeks we were not attending classes. Some of our colleagues were arrested, so we mm -hmm. were calling for their release. So instead of uh, releasing them, decided to close down the university. So when they called us back, I decided I'm not going back there. Why didn't you go, you know, 
into exile, into Russia. To that train. is what that is what I wanted. Uh, is it? Oh no, that that's uh, precisely what I wanted. Wanted uh, the, the Russians to uh, to give me this AK-47, come back and cause havoc. Honestly, at the time I was a very angry young black man because uh, the National Party all of a sudden had destroyed my career. Yeah. Wanted to really uh, be, uh, be become a political scientist. scientist, and all of a sudden this dream was shattered. And I said no. I'm going to shut her at somebody else. Uh, the white community what? in South Africa will pay the price. F unfortunately, or fortunately for me, you needed strong context to get you out of the country, yeah. and no one came forward and then ended up uh, working to all away time and also at the same time get the experience. Okay. I worked uh, for 30 months in my life, two companies, Spa Pretoria for seven months, Botani Industries for 23 months. And now, 30 year, months into working, I realize I'm getting old, I'm running out of time. At 25? No, 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 at uh, uh, 22. I was 22. You're getting old? No, <laughs> yes. I realize I'm running out of time. Uh, chances of leaving the country are getting slimmer. Oh. And then I'm not going to be working. I don't want to be like my grandfather and uh, my mother and uh, to everybody around my community. I, I had no one to, in to inspire me. Okay. So I wanted so freedom. And I said, uh, uh, because I could not attain it through education, I decided I'm going to go into business. So but what I want to know <laughs> before we go into business and you know talk about the empire is, because okay, you said, you keep on saying, I was a very angry young man. I was a very angry young man. Mm. Surely, sooner or later, you have to stop being angry because you can't be a, success a successful businessman if you're harboring anger. Yeah. So I want to know, when did the anger stop? But first, I have to go to an air break. <laughs> so you can tell me that afterwards. If you have anything to say to Mr. Herman Mashaba, send us a tweet. And no, we're not taking any billing questions. There you can go to his <laughs> office, then Johannesburg, if you want to ask him that. La, South Africa is watching. So we'll see you on the other side. Send your WhatsApp voice notes right now. When he started on the 14th of February 1985, it was during that time when there was unrest. There was state of emergency one after another. We placed orders and we bought and paid for 5,000 plastic bottles, beautifully printed and developed with this absolutely smashing Black Like Me logo. Connie and the helper was filling our products into beautiful little boxes and Joe and Herman loaded this into their cars. They left about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, very enthusiastic. And I think it was about three o'clock when first Herman pulled into the yard of our factory, jumped out terribly excited. Johan, I'm sold out. I couldn't believe my eyes. A few minutes later, Joe arrived. Johan, I'm sold out. They sold the products at a good price. They came in with a hard cash. Love or hate his politics, one can't deny Herman Mashaba has come a long way from an unpromising start in life, a journey that he started as an impoverished petty criminal, marijuana smoker to building a multi-million rand hair empire. In his early 20s, he defied his restrictive circumstances to found Black Like Me, South Africa's first black-owned hair company. Later, he became the executive chairman of Lifati Investments, a massive mining and construction company. He lectured on business leadership, both globally and at home, mentored young entrepreneurial hopefuls and was awarded an honorary doctorate in business administration. Whoa, so we should be calling you Dr. Angevele. In 2014, Dr. Herman Mashaba received a Lifetime Achievement Award from Retail Africa, and in 2015, he won a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Oliver Empowerment Awards. His story will have you, Lee, asking yourself just one question. If he did it, why can't I? Okay, so now I have so much information in my head that I want to ask you. I'm so glad that you and I are still here for a good 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. First is the, 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 the anger question. When did you stop being angry? Well, I think, you know, uh, for me to go into business, so mm -hmm. I had to save money. 
and decided I was I was uh, I wanted to become a commission sales rep because I don't come from a business uh, background. Yeah. Uh, I was not allowed by law to go into business. But you but used then, to sell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but as then, a kid, and you used to run a gambling. Yeah, no, I used to play dice at the township. Yeah. That was, uh, you know. Okay, so that, a little bit that's of a little bit I know about uh, yeah. money and being an oxman. I was an I was an oxman, but now obviously by law you can imagine we're not allowed to go into business. But no one could stop me from selling products from a boot of my car, buying products from bus different businesses, and go and sell them in the communities. Ah. That's how I started my business, and now. Then that's when I started engaging with the owners of businesses I was, was uh, selling for, like linen, dinner services, and fire And these detention. white people that yeah, you engage yeah, with? Yeah, because these businesses okay. were... And then obviously, uh, mostly I used to deal with the owners of these businesses and would obviously talk and whatever. Then realize it's the, it's the National Party that's responsible for this hatred. Okay. So not, uh, these are normal human beings. Because no one is born hating. No, yeah. Okay. That's, right. that's why now. Okay. That is why in, in 1984, when I conceived the idea of Black Like Me, and I needed someone technical, there was this uh, Johan Grill who was uh, working as a production manager. Then I said to Joseph, I said, do you know what? We need, we don't have technical know-how. Yeah. We trade as you and I say, link the same product. I said, let's talk to, to this white guy when he's uh, an employee. We, we've got nothing to lose. We took a chance. I approached Johan. He said, Johan, you and I are the top sales guys here. We were making mm. a, lots of money on commission basis. We sold the idea to Johan Krill, and Johan but bought it. But Johan was already leaving the company. No, 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 no. He was working uh, as, a, as a production manager okay. at, uh, for, for World of Hay. So then you guys broke Supercar. away. Yeah, we broke away. We, uh, and Johan bought into our dream. Then we approached uh, Mr. Dube uh, the, in Mabopani, mm. approached uh, the altar, says, Mr. Dube, Joe uh, and myself, we've got mm. this white guy, it's a great chemist, we're making, I showed him my, my commissions, the pay slips, how much money I was making every mm. month, selling super kale for those guys. Says to Mr. Dube, we've got the market waiting for us, black women wants to be pimped. Let's go out there and, and pay. We need we need uh, the the money. We had already worked out how much we needed to start the business. Yeah. We worked out we needed about thirty thousand rents. And all ten uncle Ned's uncle Ned's here was another successful businessman in Mabop, in Harangua. Yeah. They took a chance with two young black guys and this white African guy. Mm. They gave us thirty thousand rents, but they needed twenty five percent share. Was in the Joe business. your friend? Jo Joseph. Joseph, uh, I met him when I was a commission sales rep in Pretoria. Okay. And then when I was selling the hair care product, I recruited him to come and sell because we were looking for additional sales rep. And we became friends and uh, we were selling for super care. Both of us on a commission basis from the boot of our cars. Do you know why I ask if Joe was your friend? Because, mm. you know, let's go to 2017. And, and I think people who are watching today, when they heard Herman Mashaba's coming on, uh, people are like, oh, I need to understand his entrepreneurial journey. Like, how did he start? How did he become a businessman? How did he get products? How did he work the production line? Um, is that a lot of us want to go in, into entrepreneurship, right? Mm. But I think we fail because we go into it with our friends. Mm, so right. what's your advice yeah. on that? Like, well, well, how do you pick the I perfect think, no, partner? I think Joe, Joe and I, we, 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 we were business friends because how we, we met in, with Joseph in, in the 80s, uh, he, he, was a he was a commission sales rep selling clothing. At that time I was selling dinner services, mm. anything I could really make money from. And uh, do we, we had the same type of clientele. And then I was the first one to, to work for Super Kale, also on a commission basis. And then a mm. few months later, that's when one day I bumped into him in Pretoria. I said, hey, we look at these guys are looking for another commission sales rep. Mm. And he came to join me. And it took us 19 months of working for Super Kale. I said to Joseph, we're not going to work for these guys any longer, for a long time. Let's make, let's go and make these products ourselves. Mm. Because I'm telling you, Joe, this industry is going to be there forever. But then we did not have the technical know-how. So that's why we oh, took wow. a chance. That's why we took a chance. We said, "Look, let's talk to this white guy. It's not his business, Let, you know." And this uh, industry is going to be there forever. Yeah, no. And you weren't wrong. No, because here today no, 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 is no, itself. 
Well, it's, I mean, this is a, it's a global industry growing uh. ev ev every day, and, and you diversify uh, every every year. Today it's perms, tomorrow it's something else. Tomorrow it's weaves, uh, tomorrow it's curling, tomorrow it's straighteners. It's, it's body, it's, it's uh, hand and body mm. lotion, duos. Uh, it's, it's not. I mean, it's a it's a it's a huge industry with a with an international market mm. really. To I, to. I once heard you say that being an entrepreneur is a game of luck. Do you still do you still believe that? I don't know, you know, for me, it was I born to be, to be a, an entrepreneur, I think just really something that happened to me. That's why I said to you earlier on, I believe in synchronicity, um, uh, around just, just to really be yourself, act in every, all the time in, in good faith, work hard, yeah. um, and uh, don't take uh, uh, the double ups, you know shortcuts, what we call <laughs> double, double ups. ups. I know. I know. <laughs> double and up, I go five. <laughs> for me, uh, to, to, to one of my gifts, God has given me so many gifts. One gift that He gave me is to always uh, have long term plans. I don't, uh, I don't uh, worry about today. I'm not mm. looking for shortcuts in life. Uh, mm. I always take long term uh, approaches to everything that I do. And, and in the process, I get rewarded, and I get rewarded handsomely. Mm. And I think uh, I was born to really be like that. And, uh, and I was also lucky to get married at the age of 22 uh, to this beautiful girl <laughs> and, and, and gave me stab stability with all my naughtiness uh, mm. before the time, really helped me to stabilize my life. And I respected and she respected me. And we made a, a great team, we are big friends. Uh, and actually, it looks like the older we get, uh, the stronger the bond gets. So, yeah. you know, it's just really, uh, maybe I was born to be lucky. Mm. I mean, you can imagine being so fortunate to, at my age to get an opportunity to save your country and save South Africa because my project of being the executive mayor of the city of mm. Johannesburg, it's about saving the country. Because okay. without Johannesburg working, South Africa is not going to work. Or Africa. Yeah, but, we won't go, but we won't go there. Let's Sorry. not be too arrogant. So listen, he touched on something. Uh, this lady that he married at 22. So basically one day Herman ne, went to a beauty pageant <laughs> and then he got there late to this beauty pageant. So he watched the beauty pageant through a window and yeah. through a window he saw this lady, you know, I think it was a white bathing costume and he was like, she's going to win. And then she won. And then from there, this love story started. But mind you, that day he tried to get with her and she called a cricket batsman there. <laughs> she gave him bad. She was like, ah, ah, putty, not today. <laughs> Let's see the story of Connie and Herman. So I met Herman. It was his uh, second year at varsity. Strong as he is, he couldn't just take what was happening in the country at the time. And uh, when uh, the studies were cut, he wanted to go fight for, for his country. But I was there in the picture. And eventually he decided that he will stay. When he left school, his brother-in-law recruited him to his work at, at SPA. And uh, he worked there for, I think, about nine months. He then went to work for uh, Motani. And I think that's when he realized that he can be on his own because he worked for them for about 18 months. You know, from an early age um, in, our, in our lives, he wanted to be very, very independent to make sure that he doesn't depend on anyone, you know, but himself. And that's what he did. Then from there, we got married, and then um, we bought a car. Its purpose really was to bring in the income. So the family said, oh, hey, man, first a car, and now a holiday in Devon. What's next? <laughs> What's next is we find out more about Herman and Connie after the break. And welcome back. We're in conversation with Mayor of Johannesburg, Herman Mashaba. And if you're just joining us, he just told us his story of how he left the party early and got married at 22. But I mean, he went home and then he started his own house party. So I'm more interested in, so you get married, you buy a car, mm. right? And you don't have a license. Mm. <laughs> well, uh... You drive the car home <laughs> like this because you couldn't drive. 
Well, I'd never driven before, but uh, obviously, I would, because I had started saving to buy a car. Uh -huh. So then, in the process, I, pre uh, I got a, a Lena's uh, license. Is that but, your helicopter? Yeah, but I was, I was not prepared. <laughs> I, I was not prepared to uh, to, uh, to went to, uh, to uh, drive to school to get someone to teach me because, I'd, you know, I used to use taxis, and every day I'll, I'll always be in the front and watch uh, those guys drive. And I said, if those guys can do it, I'll do it ten times better. Mm. So I'm not going to pay anyone to teach me how to drive. And uh, Connie and I, honestly, on this particular day, we went to do shopping. I said, look, we're preparing to buy. I've got a driver's license. We have to really buy a car one yeah. of these days. So we'll have to figure out uh, how I drive. And I went to car buy with motors in Lodium. Uh, they were the biggest uh, Toyota dealers at the time. Yeah. And um, I get there, they show me uh, this uh, lovely car, Toyota Corollas. They were the latest uh, Corollas at, at the time. And uh, the guys uh, showed me 6,800, very expensive car at the time. Yeah. Brand new. I mean, and brand new car in the, in the, in the black townships those days was uh, unheard, un unheard of. of. Uh. But I said, no, the guy asked me, do I have the deposit? I said, yes, I've got 3,000 3, rands deposit. And they worked it out. Uh, West Bank was also on the floor. They gave uh, my app, they said, apply. Honestly, uh, truly, I was just, I wasn't, I was just taking a chance. Like, mm. I mean, I, you know. So half an hour or so, they called me back. West Bank has approved my application. My goodness. Now, and then, uh, I did, okay, uh, the then says, the, what do you do? Are you taking the car with you or you then I says, no, if, if uh, not, I can, I can I give you the check. Yeah. I'm taking the car with me. I'd never driven. And now it, it is now uh, the, it, uh, <laughs> it, it, in the workshop. So they had, uh, they had to ask them to bring it uh, uh, outside. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. you bump other cars. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah. They had the filling petrol, says Mr. Mashaba, he had your, your car. car. Connie was, was relaxed. He says, no. <laughs> Connie wanted to tell those people that I can't drive. I said, I pleaded with us. I said, please. I said, I said, I said, jump I said, I said, we'll get home. Uh. Yeah, and luckily we got home. But unfortunately, um, uh, I had to stop at Jubilee Hospital. Imagine driving from Lodium mm. to a Manskral. I mean, at, 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 it was a five uh, gears. The, you know, the, the car, the Toyota just in, introduced a five gear yeah. at, the, at the time. <sighs> Driving through Pretoria, uh. no driver's license, managed to get to Amanskral. And um, as we enter Amanskral, there's Jubilee Hospital. My sister was a nursing sister there. Oh. So I said to Cody, let's stop and show my sister that the we car. bought a car. You know? Then we went excited, came to have a look at the car. Now, now I've got to reverse. Man. Because my first reverse was stopped by a tree. <laughs> 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 Don't laugh. It's not a, it's not a movie. It's a <laughs> no, it's a movie. No, it's a movie. I, I, like, I like the fact but, that. But you... I got home and yeah. then I got my cousin who I used to, to work for a bus company yeah. that afternoon to start uh, practicing. Sunday I practiced. Monday, decided, to no, no. Monday, <laughs> I said, "Can I to go to to work with us?" I was working in Guru Sport for Matani. Yeah. Then Monday, now I still use public transport. Then came back early to practice. From Tuesday onwards, I went uh, to uh, to work with that car. And then I think about two, three months later, that's when I got my driver's license. And I got my driver's license the first time because I was, by then time you I, were a I, driver. Oh, and I was uh, I was driving, and I've been driving ever since. But I like the fact that you call your wife your best friend. Like, do you, what is she good at that you aren't good at when it comes to your business side of life? I think uh, if, if I look at my upbringing, uh, the, the, the very the scary sometimes when I look at it mm -hmm. uh, as young black boys in the townships, I don't know about the other, uh, other races, uh, you know. For us, when you grow up, um, uh, 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 liking girls was our, one of our biggest weaknesses. Mm. You know, and, and also I fell into the trap of liking beautiful girls and, and so, so forth. So when I decided to, to go into business by a car, I realized uh, I need stability in my life. Mm. But then I looked at my relationship. Um, if uh, someone is weak, 
um, a, a woman is weak or any person is weak. Mm. Because in, in my life, my survival is totally dependent on being surrounded by strong people. Yes. Because uh, because yeah. I'm that kind of person. Yeah. I speak my mind, I'm, I, I engage. People can't so, wither when you speak. No. They must stand up to you if no, they can. No. Yeah? And uh, for some reason, uh, the why Cody's relationship with her keeps growing strong because she, does, she doesn't take my nonsense. She challenges me. And, uh, and, and the more she challenges me, the more she builds me because, uh, honestly, I, I can't uh, have a relationship with someone who would uh, not challenge me because mm. uh, I make mistakes. And I think, and, I, and I, what I, I like about myself is that uh, I want to change life. I want to mm. change the world. And the only way I can change the world is to always uh, try new things. But then if, you, if you're not surrounded by, by people who are going to challenge you, you've got a problem. So. With Connie around, I always feel secure because uh, I know she's not going to stand for my nonsense. Mm. Is know? she the one who told you to run for mayor? <laughs> no, no. This actually took her by surprise. <laughs> Every day, with, you know, when I get home, I mean, because this job of being a mayor, honestly, it's a, it's a very, it's almost an impossible job. It Almost impossible, yeah. and no yeah. one appreciates uh, that. Always, you are insulted. You are called names mm. and everything. Mm. So from time to time, I'll get home. I'm tired. I said, No, I'm throwing in the towel. And he says, mm -mm. No, uh, he, says no one, he says, No one called you. You, <laughs> you volunteered. He you says, You know, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to leave this job. And. Um, and I think, it, luckily, she really gives me the, 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 the kind of support. So you can imagine if I uh, did not really someone like that who really yeah. gives you that kind of support. Because she realizes the type of work I'm doing. She says, yeah. this is, says, you know what, Herman, this is not about you. This job is not about you. Mm. You, you volunteered. I will look after our family interest. I will support you. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're not going to quit unless, uh, yes, one day the motion of no confidence. I says the day when they can have a motion of no confidence, then you'll have a good excuse. But right now, for as long as the residents of the city of Johannesburg uh. wants you to be the mayor, um, you are going to be the mayor, whether you like. So, so uh, I'm under those t terms that uh, mm. uh, the only people who must decide whether I must stop doing this job are the youth, the residents of the city of Johannesburg. So but for me, day, for me, as much as it's difficult, yeah? it kills me. Uh, so unfortunately, but on the, day, home, they, on says, the you know, day of the motion of no confidence, <laughs> yeah. how did you sleep the day before? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, I was I was relaxed. I, I, I think, Anneli, you must understand. Uh. I did not impose myself to be the executive mayor of the city of Johannesburg. Mm. I represent the DA with fifty eight with thirty eight percent of the votes. On our first uh, council meeting on the twenty second of August, I was elected by fifty two percent of mm. of council. In the of council, yes. Yeah. That felt that uh, for them South Africa first, and they wanted to take ANC out. And I said to, my, uh, to everyone, my t t uh, remaining as a mayor is not to be determined by the ANC. ANC voted against me on day one. From in day council. one. So From day one. I'm not surprised that yeah. they want me so out. Said, they didn't want me uh, in. Yes, a yeah. ANC voted me. To, I'm sure everyone saw. ANC voted me. To, voted against me. ANC, when I took over, they said that my my government is not going to last three months. Three months. They said I won't be able to pass my budget. My budget. But uh, every all the 52 percent of the parties always supported me, and they know my views regarding mm. making sure that I'm a public servant. I fight corruption. I want to establish a professional public service and deal with these massive challenges that our city is facing. Okay, so now that we've touched on that, uh, we're going to go for an ad break. When we come back, I want to talk about the politics of it all. Your coalition in, in, in Johannesburg is with EFF, ne? That's right. Okay. And, and uh, IFP, COPE, uh, uh, the, the Ahang, and COPE. Okay, sure. Yeah. We're going to talk about all of that uh, when we come back. Keep the tweets coming. We'll be back after this. Our guest today, Herman Ashaba, sold everything from insurance to crockery. Then he discovered black hair products with his wife, Connie Mashaba, alongside him. On Valentine's Day 1985, they would launch Black Like Me, turning it into a multi-million rand company and a household name in South Africa. Welcome back. We are with the mayor of Johannesburg, Herman Mashaba, who just survived a motion of no confidence. Ha, ah, he's actually confident. So why the DA? 
Were you always DA? Actually, that's no, what I want to know. You know, it's interesting for me. The first time in my life uh, to take a membership of a political party was after the 2014 national elections mm. when ANC received 62% of the votes. It just did not really make sense with mm. all the failures, uh, the corruption, mm. high unemployment, uh, bad education. I said, uh, something is not right. I yeah. voted for Nelson Mandela on the 27th of April, 1994, yeah. and I'm really very proud of this. And it's uh, for for me, it's one of the the heroes of my my era. Yeah. And I voted for Thabo Mbeki again, f first time in 1999. Yeah. But it's, uh, during the uh, campaign for his second term, unfortunately, I lost. Uh, oh, so you bowed out of Thabo Mbeki already? No, 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 because of okay. uh, because of the Zimbabwean situation. I looked at uh, that beautiful country being destroyed in front of our eyes, uh, and uh, the South African government under Thabo Mbeki failed to, to take appropriate action against uh, him. And the reason why I got cross because Thabo Mbeki, when he was the, uh, when he took over, he came out with this concept of the African Renaissance, mm. Mm. Uh, good governance, mm. Uh, mm. responsive leadership, democracy, human rights. And all of a sudden, here's Mugabe uh, doing and well, doing and, and we're allowing the opposite. it. We are allowing it. I then said when uh, the Thabo Mbeki second term came and openly said to everyone, NC has lost me. But then I thought it was just really uh, that maybe what it'll be after Thabo Mbeki will get uh, another reasonable person. Yeah. Oh my goodness! But then, 2007, <laughs> oh, now to Jacob Zuma's. That's when I realized, no, my country is in big, big trouble. Okay, so now that we speak about Zimbabwe, you've been accused of being xenophobic. We've got three minutes left. Let, let this be the last thing we clear out. Are you xenophobic? I don't know what people would really mean by xenophobic. I'm sure you you saw a few weeks ago with the South African Human Rights Commission mm -hmm. and uh, an African Diaspora Forum, uh, the way I'm actually taking uh, the, uh, the home affairs uh, to court. Actually, mm -hmm. this tomorrow is the D-Day because mm -hmm. I had given them until the 24th to come back to me to give me their plan on how they intend dealing with undocumented people in the city of Johannesburg. Because for me to be able to uh, to develop Especially the city properly. properly. I need to ensure that everyone is documented uh, and so we know who's So you're not saying it. get out of here. You're saying let me know you are here. No, that, that's the reason why I've got the support of the South African, uh, uh, the African diaspora. They are going to be the friends of the court to support me. I've got a legal contract that they've signed with me. In the beginning, ANC had given them, their, they wanted them to approach me thinking that I'm, I'm, I'm xenophobic. But mm -hmm. every time I engage ANC in the corners, they understood. But uh, every time after the meeting, when they go out into the public, actually misrepresent me. Mm. But fortunate enough, it's, you know, lies can never, the truth and always triumph. So mm. people are very much aware, I want 7 billion people of the world to come to South Africa. But I want them to come here legally, and I want when they're here, they must respect our laws. Otherwise, you come to South Africa illegally and you don't respect the laws of this country mm. without any doubt, unapologetically, I'm saying, no, you cannot really be Enough in South Africa. That. You cannot be in the city of Johannesburg because obviously I'm responsible for the city of Johannesburg and I've got the support of the, the, uh, the uh, African Diaspora Forum. They understand my position because what I'm preaching actually protects South Africans and it protects uh, our foreign nationals who are in the country mm. legally. Because also, if they're here legally, then the police can't abuse them and make them pay Absolutely. bribes and all of that. No, no, we hear you. Listen, we are out of time. But uh, I'm upset. There's many things that we didn't speak about, like Murskont, a gangster that Herman used to deal with when he was still young. <laughs> we haven't spoken about how well he used to do at school. He used to hold extra lessons at his house because he was such a power <laughs> student. We haven't, you know, discussed at length the entire, the entire Johan Creel um, meeting that he had. Luckily, there's a book called Black Like You that you can get by Herman Mashaba. Trust me, uh, you want to get this one. He is the mayor of Johannesburg, and this has been Real Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. Tomorrow, the president of the Women's League will be here. President Batabile Damini. Uh, she's also the minister of social development. You want to stay for that. It is our first two-hour special ever. Mm -hmm. Come back for that. Thanks for joining us.
Thank you.